your personal power or anybody who's listening, their personal power is really where a sort of agreement is. Yeah. And someone totally is focusing on gaining agreement. Yes? Just gaining agreement. Oh, okay. A gained agreement. Yeah. The brain is playing more and it cuts off whatever projected conflict was. Yes? Where somebody's in their personal power, it's equal to formlessness and they're not seeking conflict. Yes? And yet, like, where someone is, they are going through life and they cannot necessarily sometimes make decisions easy because of inner conflict between parts sort of thing, yeah? So preferred modes of sorting information could be congruent, couldn't it? Meaning it's a parallel what you say or and what you do. And it's integrated because it's coming from interest. And it's in the present versus someone's telling someone else that they are in the future or in the past, it's like something is present which is more powerful. And that's being with awareness and not knowing or being with knowing or anything. It's just being empty, having empty and having care. That's what eye awareness is. So somebody says, am I eye aware? So you're just falling into emptiness in your center and having care. And so you quick smart see if that's the case. It's just a question you could ask. Otherwise, somebody could be less than being in agreement, yes, and less than being in agreement with condition, yes, but just polarizing. I don't want to try try but must only and everything that's obscure and disadvantaged and doesn't fit. <laughs> it's a bit funny. So seeking agreement really is like you can feel that in the physiology of the person. Yes? Does that make sense? You can feel it like when... Well, somebody could be saying stuff but they're not aware of their body language itself. Right? And the body language, yes, yeah, so the body language could advantage you, couldn't it, yes? Your body language could really be fitting rather than a polarizing and causing a greater obscurity, yes? And so even somebody's language might care or their intention might, but their body language not, and somebody could be saying yes but shaking their head no. And at the same time, that's the simultaneous incongruency. Sequential would be where somebody says yes, and then after that, they say no. You see? So it's sort of really examples of where um, one could be more seeking agreement, and that's more a true hearing therapeutic because it's really all what's carried out more as a pattern ongoing, yeah? So, yeah, for people listening, they could wire in a new behavior generator which is totally focused on agreement and they could look to see where people are seeking agreement and you could see the benefit of what this is. And so power really is your ability to get others to do things for you. That's your personal power. Yeah. And so something is precognitive long before anything comes along. But often people uh, have got a group speak. That group speak could have been given to someone to pressure them or hypnotize them into a certain program. And all, you know, religions do that a lot. And they have ways to have group speak. And so they're asking people to individually do things and go on a course, which, like, you know, to war or to do something that's like this, which is totally against their individual sense of things. And yet they're going to go along with it. Why? Well, because they have such a power to hold on to being, you know, in union with others where they are. And that's so powerful that it can take over what somebody's um, you know, self-autonomy is. And while somebody's being has been yanged or cloistered and not allowed to actually see what the rest of the world is, speech could often be done more where decision making and strategy is, but yet sort of come from obsessive compulsive behavior where people are prejudiced 
and so that group speak is, oh, this is what you do. Like, for instance, if you if they took you away from your father, for instance, they don't want you to know anything about that for sure, but not even act upon anything like you have this. And so it's evident in someone's choice that a choice could be existed that doesn't exist where something is psychologically muted and missing. I mean, then where someone's alienated, they become the X in group speech. I mean, then so anything that comes along, anybody does any good who's alienated as a parent, for instance, it's just looked upon as that something that you did, which is bad, you know, yeah? And you can't do good. And forever in a day, you'd never do good because there's something obsessive, compulsive was put underneath as a prejudice and so deep where somebody's a child and becomes, and so they can say, I feel really happy not speaking to you sort of thing, which is positive. You've got to think about what the value behind all things are. So if you value things, this really discharges criticism. Yeah. So you valuing so well. What's the value of what goes on? And now you're, you're more in a power. Exactly. Okay? <laughs> yes? And you have happiness. And it's a more a lifestyle, a life story versus a love story. And you're, you're really more optimistic. You know, you've got more what's irregular that you can correct. And the things where the conflictedness is, people could have valuing. And it's really valuing. You're sort of wondering, what is the value of what this is? And then you're bringing things up to a greater value, you see. So typically, like, the vestibular sense is forward, back, up and down, and um, you only have access to this if you're polarised to your own first attention, and you're empty, you see. And now you have capacity to stop, start and redirect. That's your vestibular sense. And so uh, where somebody offers a strategic a strategic non-response, that's really good. You could learn how to do that where some ones are it's trying to polarise you where behaviour is. Um, you could have a strategic non-response so that you're not there to be playing that game sort of thing. But managing criticism really is an art because most people don't know how to do that, but you've really got to, you can by valuing. And where conflict is, like war is at the moment, where people are themselves, but they have a pattern to be able to resolve things. And we, we, the uh, protectedness, where anything is overprotected or underprotected, and but conflicted as a part, it, that's gained value. And um, what is the value? <clears throat> and what what's what's the highest order where something is where this is its value? Do you see, rather than polarised to. As somebody then can look in more a neutral ground to see a choice that can exist um, that didn't exist where some direction was put because group speak actually caused something to be muted out fully that wouldn't be ever, even if it were actually offered, seen to be as some some greater, better being. But certainly like where someone is, you know, the greater effort would be, for instance, like a child to be um, joined with their parent and have interdependence. And often like because um, self-autonomy was taken away as a child, that's the only thing that somebody really cares to do. And um, in spreading their wings, it's only that they must um, have to sort the conflict out. But often going to Abilene, it means that you're going to go somewhere where nobody's going to agree with any, any rules to, t to follow them, follow forward with them. And they're going to have a challenge which is to be able to manage any disagreement. And so, you know, truth always is just kind of which is mutually beneficial, yeah? And Innovation really always comes from uh, a committed few and always change really is from a band of these committed few, which really is a positive inductive economy at the end of this and not negatively inducted at all, but a real estate is you and I, that's the value and it's unlimited versus something fixed like gold or something else and all movable sorts of assets like that. But you and I, we're the real estate and have an account and it positively inducted currency. And so... Everything is really a, like uh, something in perpetuity as a value um, and something in, in uh, having an intrinsic value 
and that's how a currency is between ourselves and what's an unlimited worth or all of this could be received in an account, as an account from an account which is paid for and you've got something there for the next 210 years more to be compensating everybody for all the fiasco that's gone on and not having had capacity to ease of ability to, to pay for things or have proper currency disperse inflation deflation doesn't exist those are all things which can be corrected and healed and what's the reason to bribe people if they're given to and this is called republicing the debt this is called revenue and it's the pen that's mighty than the sword, of course, because innovation really is always uh, from a small, subtle notice to them, some things, but brought to light more of us. We could have verified by uh, we're raising currency for a unique project, and that's spent equal to product and service, so there is no inflation. And so you could think of uh, a lot of things how something could 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 transpire. Um, but if you are reading uh, any collective fallacy, a uh, really an urge, as we just started out talking about, can be a real urge to conform and to have been so strong that urge. And most people go along with uh, things and um, don't even think about actually that's the right course at all. That's the Abelian um, paradigm, which Abel Gate means you are only uh, having the Pope be the one um, who's um, connected to God and can can connect with things and that um, everybody else has to be a subject to that. That's what Abelgate means. Abelene is the lack of ability to be able to manage disagreement and going into such. And it's a fear of of you know, uh, not not being able to have any voice, of course, and any voice dissent, and any non-alignment more where the group is and the group think, and so our members all come to a uniformity more, and so you know it's it's not a proper gained efficiency, but you and I, um, but yet with agreement we could look at valuing and see and be able to heal where conflict is, and not have to have some conflicted part, which is some organised dysfunction. So most can be just only having thought that where they are is organised dysfunction and some escape and where the escape is, is is an artificial womb and it certainly is organised dysfunction. And so the collective fallacy that everybody can is really is a failure to manage agreement. Anybody could... You know, listening to the background where things are and they can hear sort of like if language is like flowing and, and it's smooth and it's sort of like slightly slurred because that sort of is a language of pleasure and interest. And then when you hear all speech, which is overdrive, yeah, it's all coming from aversive physiology inside nonstop. So it really is taking a look at the note that you're using and, and is there sort of an up and down a bit somewhere there a bit so it's not just a flat straight more or less taking action sort of is quite a contradiction often and it, though the highest intention is there it's actually raising that issue about the highest intention is that all things being satisfied where something is as a choice being made as an outcome group think uh, could have an agreedness collectively also individually to what what one wants, whereas Abilene paradox, no one agrees really with the collective decision, you see, and that's what that means basically. So if you manage disagreement, of course, you're arresting the, your first attention, you're polarizing to that, like we said, and you're sort of falling silent and you're uh, got back to stop, start and redirect where the vestibular sense is. Um, and the purpose of the paradox more is sort of less, less is actually uh, more and more is actually less and that's sort of a condition which is sort of something which not is, isn't able to be satisfied. Right
And so in the beginning is the end, and that's sort of like speech examples more or less of someone who is conflicted and doesn't really have a proper neutral setting. And that's sort of an example of group speak sort of thing, types of things that people would be saying or doing. But it's an inability that's being programmed for you or I or anybody to not be able to manage disagreement. And so it's an absolute dysfunction. Abilene is like a metaphor for, it's like an end of an order. And it's, it's like what the dysfunction is. And you can look and see what that is. But um, it's really a continuous adaption that someone has to do where Abilene is to manage the environment non-stop shifting and shifting constantly the ground. And just like a black swan has knocked the nation over, its governance and all rises more from their capacity to be able to respond to things. And mixing corporate corporations up and giving great value to them and not the living, it's really a form of fascism, you see. And so an alphabet soup plan doesn't have any central organised nervous system where you or I do, and that we can always, by valuing what's important, we can really be focused on clearing up any conflict that arises because a map of reality could be far more generalised That's to, or, or things deleted or included or construction of how you've constructed things. That's a map that you have inside. Could be too really enriched. Yes. Otherwise, it's really could be not delegation for anything done, but abdication where somebody's be asked to do something, but they can't really do that. And to avoid sort of that Abilene paradox, you're sort of really gaining back your own self autonomy and looking to see how you can do that and growing that value up where it is. So as you can see, you also can have the interdependence to go forward where you are. So those are things which isn't conflicted. And so you're identifying all the group think which was and is, and it's really opposite what should be, what's proper as a proper culture. It's only that somebody outside that group think which has another type of group think can can um, somebody be caused to feel there's another way to think about something total. But so one thing somebody could do to really be gaining back their uh, self autonomy about this is to really avoid um, that Abilene paradox by identifying group think and what's opposite and what is pro what's opposite to a proper culture. So you're creating avenues to voice concern where matter is and finding a neutral ground to actually to talk about the subject of things and so that's something which people come to have more deeper inside themselves um, and we're configuring more where group think is, it's really more triangulation where other type of culture which has a different sort of way of thinking about something like for instance children should have their self-autonomy right from the get-go it shouldn't be something that's taken away from them and where interdependence is something was never given, that's not proper function, you see. So you're letting agreement be more where consensus building, decision making is, and you're you're really avoiding more the group think language. You're making room more inside yourself for valuing and valuing what choices somebody's made and you're looking at what the value is there and looking at what other choice is existing that gives the same value or even more. And so that you can gain the better value by growing things up in choice, uh, by valuing things and what's the highest value that can be achieved that's over the top of it all. And so now you're stopping all the pluralistic sort of ignorance that could have been going on and group think where members would have all agreed and some core expected condition like Abilene paradox where individuals privately disagree with the group's collective decision, you see. And so it's by pressure ongoing where something is which that's that you could look at that you could say how come some how come what's the reason why pressure is or if you could see self censure no you can't think about things in another way or you can't do anything else and this is the only thing that you can do and you don't have um, any other way meaning that where's this talk about all the resources that somebody really does have. So something else is a choice is far different than what somebody had self-censorship about where they are. And it's really you or I seeing the inability where someone is to have managed or ag agreement and to really have capacity to be able to manage conflict. One can't be in the lack of the capacity to manage that. It's really a want to do a single thing more 
I mean, you can only do one, follow one 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 master. You see, you can't be following a couple of masters inside yourself. And so the Abilene paradox is like, yeah, the green, the grass is going to be greener somewhere else. I mean, it's unknown. Um, and fraught with all sorts of things, but it's certain that it's not with any interdependence. Because why? Well, because I, know I need to be independent, and that's what well, the group think that told me that. Because they didn't say you have any support from your family or your father or anyone and such. I mean, so it's odd. Um, yet somebody could really see any everything sort of as an adventure or excitement and spontaneity but where you're not looking at something because somebody says man this is a really good adventure where is the contradiction where anything is where all things have remained you know a lot sometimes for a really long long time actually you see so you know get it. on a bus to Abelin is a paradox of an action anxiety sort of thing which is addicted in an accord or where a belief is and what's next to be done more is is a uh, members act um, and um, an actual to go somewhere where the members are not going to be too supportive or to be any in any accord to have any logical continuum go on. Um, and someone is running into what this is. That's what the Abelian paradox is about. I mean, where somebody is in that, you can't be a naysayer. You see. So it's it's sort of like what religions really do. Abelgate is uh, the Pope is the one wherever you are on the earth, um, and he's the only one that could connect you to God. And other everybody else is a subject under the Pope. But the urge to conform, like I said, is really strong. And the Abelian paradox is really where group speak is some collective plan that's given to people. So you've got to march off the wall. Um, but that might be something you don't agree with inside, but you. Get off to it, get off that way anyway. I mean, so it's really along where group think is, even where there's there's no proper condition that's existing. You've got two basic premises. You've got really an inability to cope with disagreement. You've got poor poor capacity for communication and conflict sort of sorted. So. This, like what I'm talking about, is not available to someone because they're not valuing anything. But it could be to just listen to this and change things around more for themselves. It's a priming more where groupthink has been, and where's the collective fallacy wherever any of that is? It's like astroturfing. It's like painting like something is really a grassroots movement, you know, when that doesn't exist at all. So the consequence of anything where efficiency really would have could have been is wasted and gone and teamwork or your work really becomes alienated from what you 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 would have uh, achieved and recognized and uh, acknowledged and grown in which is motivating and so because that doesn't ever happen it's like you've jumped into a paradox and it's it's to stop a lack of proper efficiency actions that would defeat and the highest goal where someone is somebody really asked what's the highest intention that you could achieve by having that choice you see so they're overcoming more learned helplessness because it's really a decor that's going on overall that you could look and see then you can see by interactions how many interactions somebody has versus somebody does not have any interactions at all or um, the interactions only can be that um, the other other parent, for instance, is alienated, and um, anything could be um, considered whatever benefit, or even like all this language uh, or discussion of anything is being rude, for instance. Um, neutral setting where anything is, it's just really a conflict where, because conditions can have existed where um, somebody's been alienated and some archetypes are going on, you see. Um, so that's a way to check that out. It's sort of who's alienated really at some sort of archetype going on. And it's a barrier often for any of us to be able to gain essence, you know. Um, and it's learned helpless. So where a choice exists, it's not really getting um, taken, which it could. And so no matter how much good is done, it would never be recognized as good. It's not wanted. And so you see what self-autonomy is there definitely is without any interrelatedness and... Um, Interdependence and interdependence is really like a mutual lived assistance, and it's mutual lived assistance describes nature more, not somebody. I'm I'm so independent. I'm going to 
kick butt myself or something. But the error of the terror, really, when you recognise it, acknowledge is that's one thing to clear away learned helplessness. And the other thing is really learning new ways to be able to love. These two parts, good and more, coming together sort of clears away learned helplessness. So keep in mind, sort of a real technique, sort of a valuing is far more. It's way what what the Toltecs teach and what we do and what our work is. And you could look and read and things. You got to see that it's sort of more that valuing is the things that you're doing. And so you're focusing on what's interest, what's pleasure, because that's actually causing you to be more in the frontal cortex versus the Abilene paradox is a collective fallacy, which is really a, ch- a course chosen counter to the preference of all and autonomous and um, and from some autonomous inter- independence, but not autonomous interdependence. And to have long group um, things where some want would be um, for the group more, but not you. It's just to become more useful for a group and such. An ability to value and agree rather than the inability to cope with fact. It's better to have conflict that's central to, to getting cleared up and being grist and valued versus conflict being central to dysfunction and not having the various values ever valued up. I think, I don't know, I could, um, maybe we could talk a bit more about this, but um, we could wrap things up just a bit so it's all sort of perhaps uh, um, cl- a clear relative. Um, but conflict is worse rather than not. It's better because pleasure and interest really could trigger whole brain patterning and aversion really only would have triggered whole limited mind function and what the choices someone has could be more total and more unlimited versus no, this is very limited and I'm just going to go somewhere. But we could look at the conflicted part where relation is and um, you could focus where autonomy really is relevant to someone's interdependence versus like their dependence and uh, that's stuck where something is. And this is really what the uh, Abilene paradigm is really really about but the development in character where in a conflict is cleared away and then someone really has his ability not to be um, kept as an anger addict or conflict seeker so rather than hearing something what the benefit is and the value to someone they're only going to focus on what the conflict is and they're going to have all those patterns which is it's about anger addiction but but honoring love and listening and being deep more with somebody is fed more where through uh, there's a better way and that what said you all can be more full silence more inside and such is sort of valuing where something is going on like that because you're really keeping a focus on what the uh, meta or position over the top more is yes so whole brain functioning is really interest and pleasure of course and stimulate whole brain packing our awareness really is where you're empty and you simply are in care so where somebody says they care oh good but if they've gone into I don't care well that's limited mind function itself so the so decision model should really be involving the senses so kinesthetic auditory visual but a lot of stuck states occur because only somebody sort of more in the kinesthetic state and they really haven't got any oh that sounds right that's really um, uh, uh, sounds interesting to discuss, to mention, to admit, to explain or auditory words, whereas to see what I mean, to get a clear perspective, to get a frame of reference and to get an overview are all visual ways and and what representativeness of the senses are being used because most stuck states occur because somebody's maybe not using their visual system like they really could, like, oh, I see what you mean. Hmm. And now you've got the bigger picture. Or well, when you do that, you're more in omnipresent when you do that because you're looking over something. So inductive process where anybody is, is really can apply open coding more and pass consensus more. And so you're looking at objection and you're looking at things more open. And otherwise, you're passing on a consensus of objection that's totally about a structural of violence instead. And do you know anything about this? I'd w- wisely look into what the Abilene paradox is about, look into whole brain functioning, what's, what's whole brain functioning about, what's eye awareness about. You could easily propose a strategy more where inconsistencies were prevented more and never had to come to be anymore because somebody's got more structural condition. But otherwise, a lot of operation is taken and it's total to structural violence instead. 
So does anybody listening know that you could give somebody instructions to have an anesthetic before some surgery was so that they could have that procedure and be fine about it? You know, I mean, it's a playback, which what is really getting on where um, whole brain patterning is as something ongoing is coming from your emptiness and simple care. Otherwise, you're not in the moment. You've got something in your head. You've got something in your brain. There's a hell of a lot of internal dialogue going on, and you haven't met anybody actually that causes your own improvement to be. If anybody asks you what's your power, is it that you know that it's really your ability to be able to win friends and influence people? And how is it that one could avoid a conscious objection and also all the self-censuring? It goes on. It's like, oh, well, I won't do this, but I should. Or I won't do this, but I should. And it's really an emotion, emotional, uh, it's emotional maturity where somebody really is able to kind of just like turn everything down to about maybe a two so you could actually look at everything in fact, you see? Yes? And valuing is really the most important thing, mate. Yeah, it really is. It's valuing so that you're getting a greater meta position. And so, you know, you're only otherwise looking at a pattern of procrastination that's evident where conflict is really inside and going toward conflict and supporting conflict versus having some union, having the greater purpose. And so chunking things down where something isn't to be looked at things and valuing where any choice is, it's really like something that can be changed. But it's certain that most people were like, for instance, are taken away from their family. What's the reason why 99% of most of these people never go back to their blood family? You could think there's a lot of reasons. Oh, my God, it's so heavy. And um, some of this stuff that we're just talking about a little bit is really components of this. But synesthesia is where somebody can gain a new insight by being a different personality or integrating things by a substitute or having a complex equivalent where something is, you see. These are all valued ways of being able to look at something and get a different perspective and simply valuing where the conflicting part is and taking a higher meta position that's over the top of what that is and growing the value by valuing um, that autonomy up to come to be back where it, you are in interdependence with your own self-autonomy. And so now somebody isn't conflicted, but they have their interdependence and their also their self-autonomy. Otherwise, somebody's just not getting a life. They're trying to get a wife or that's about a, a love story instead. But when you or I or anybody really is able to view uh, some opposing desire, and motivation, a physiological sort of tension could have all been going on where all of that would have been. And this, which we're just talking about, is what are you doing inside yourself and what are you and I hodling? Yeah, mainly. Anyway, sort of it's really about becoming more whole again. I guess it's a little off topic, but like I said, I'm going to go in order of the people who sent them. And uh, if you do... Want be great. To get a question answered. Yeah, it's okay. We send it. Oh, we could be off topic. You just go ahead. Okay. Great. It'd be just a question and answer session always. Stuff's going to be at the back end of things. Go Flat ahead. Flat Earth. He says, Flat Earth. Yes. Question mark. Um. Um, should someone have a strategic, oh, well, yeah, there's so many ways that somebody can manage um, stupidity, of course, right? <clears throat> um, where, like, for instance, I'm not sure, like, could you say that, of course, uh, there's no such thing as a bunny that lays eggs, for instance. Bunnies don't lay eggs. Um, it's sort of confusing because when you're young, maybe you're thinking, um, you know, you see chickens lay eggs, but... Kind of, you see that you know, eggs are connected to rabbits, sort of thing. <clears throat> um, I'm not sure. Um, somebody has to grow up, or you're just like having to not participate where someone is just not logical about anything. Yes, right. Um, also, to you think experiments could be made just so that everybody could just see how gullible that you are. Of course. And that was that's one experiment that was done to just see how gullible anybody is. Yes. Okay. This is from Sophia. 
in the United Kingdom. The Jubs Black Amber Glycolic. Did you already? Did I already ask you that question? Oh, I'm not sure. <clears throat> um, it's a question about the, the amber glycolic. Um, it's it's a compound which has a nitrogenated terpenoid compound in it, which um, that triggers things within your body. And it's a major molecule, which if you get that parts per million, very small parts per million, it has such a marked effect on the body. It actually switches off um, oxid uh, aerobic glycolysis, which is um, inefficient um, energy system where lactic acid would have been produced and things. It switches that off because it's, it's not efficient and it switches back on oxidative metabolism. It helps correct neurotransmitters and things and such as sort of sniffing it. It can cause someone to come out of a coma. You put a little bit on a fungus and it will eat the fungus up and heal the skin. Put a tiny bit of it, like a bead of it, into a uh, ulcer that's three years old, it'll heal it up. It'll help heal this up, you see, yes? And um, so it's a purgative, so a small amount of this taken internally, learned how to with a, a, a citric acid and bicarb shot. And it's, it's a treatment which could be going on and lasting within the body for, for three weeks, for three weeks or more. And continuing to have an effect, you see. Yeah. And um, it's made from the skin of aloe vera and whole aloe vera leaf, yes, and rhodium osmium and ruthenium and, and time. It takes about a year and a half to make them or something. Yeah, it takes time, mate, uh, yeah. year and a half or more to make a batch of something that's like this. Yeah, yeah so it's it's precious, right. And it's, and it's got book amber on it. Okay. What's another question, man? Yeah, I thought you were, maybe it was like a code word for H urine therapy. Because I did, a, like you said, snorting. Oh, uh, well, um, yeah, activating a herbal, uh, activating a formula can be done with urine kept in the fridge. Yeah. And then you have your formula, yes, and you've activated with urine, yeah. But that's pretty amazing. Okay. What's another question here? Okay, <clears throat> encephalomalacia. Um, missing brain tissue from encephalomalacia. Encephalomalacia. Yeah. Okay. I wonder what they can um, be done about that. Um, um, you're you're uh, stopping the insult that's occurred on the neurology of the brain. You're healing up the blood-brain barrier. Um, and you're bringing in antioxidants with clear this up, and you're bringing in various formula um, we have that's incredible, like sulfur dioxide types of formulas, um, which are extremely powerful antioxidant, which produce energy. Otherwise, someone's healing this up with a life food, nutritional cleanse, job cell rejuvenation, and uh, they're doing cast packs over the stomach and things, and someone has to absolutely stop or breathing through the mouth when they sleep and they have to stop all high phosphate food and all methionine rich food and bring some formula in like we have like brain alternative or like you can get lion's mane and things but you look into that a little and bring some things in to help brain the brain regrow it could be cleared up Clear up what's causing it, and that's all dead food. Dead food begets dead. Uh, life begets life. One could learn more about this, yes. But these are conditions that all can get healed up. If somebody wants to connect in, they could connect with you to connect with me. Yeah. I think if we get a good sound clip, I can do something called a react. I think it's called a react video where you post somebody talking about it and then your response and so if you want oh how that good be a good idea uh the vi yeah. the video it was it reminded me to ask you is fascia is, is a common uh, terminology that people are using in uh, today in the, in the common parlance and online and stuff they talk about fascia and athleticism is that the same as what connective is, what? tissue 
uh, of fascia, the fascia. Yes, fascia is uh, connective tissue. You've got um, different layers of connective tissue, which most cancers and neoplasm always forms from fascia and covering and synovial fluid sort of uh, material. Yeah. Um, so, um, and then what, um, so fascia or work with fascia is, um, is uh, sort of like deep tissue reconstructed body work where you're going in and you're doing talking some, and um, using some torsion there, some pressure and torsion, but torsion mostly, um, sliding micromagnetic filaments away from each other and bringing them back together again and um, clearing away all of the cross link fibers, yeah? Yeah, the cross fiber linkage is really what goes in there. All kinds of oxidants are being there, guys. Then someone um, has not moved their muscles and things. The mice and active filament never actually came to its extremity, much of things. It wasn't the body able to um, um, have uh, neutralized, you know, negatively neutralized so that you don't have a minus 71 millivolts first row centimeter tube in your tissue, which allows an impulse that goes along your nerve to be able to be depolarized afterward. So where the muscle is able to relax um, and the nerve cells be able to depolarize, and it, the, the, your, uh, your muscles all work properly, but otherwise they become tired. And so various techniques that someone could learn, like deep, jumps deep tissue reconstructive body work, which is really incredible. Which I taught that for some more five years on the road where I was, where I've been. Um, but it's the work that I do where people are, and um, it's something which I use to help people heal and things. So fascia is really connective tissue, and you and I we get receive information through our connective tissue. It's called the nociceptive system, and most of our sensation and things that we have more through our body really comes more through our connective tissue, and it's well, really like a, a nervous system itself and it's, you couldn't just say it's a secondary nervous system at all. It's really um, like more, more semi-conductive in, in the way that it operates and things. Yeah, so. What else, mate? That's amazing. Because I... Uh, I got a, a lot of... Uh, benefit from uh, all the all the teachings that you that you have been so generous with what you do, and uh, I just try to do it all, including that treatment that you were just talking about, microcirculation. Oh yeah, it helps improve microcirculation. I just um, have trouble getting somebody to uh, to do my back spot. It's like right behind my heart, and I have a yoga hook, but I can't re. It doesn't like dig good, you know. So I think I'm gonna take the massage classes and ask my t fellow students to <laughs> help. <laughs> um, well, the whole body could have been scraped down with uh, black gold, and and um, all stone cleared away from the body, so no more stone is. And so somebody really doesn't have any more silent inflammation. Most people really have a lot of silent inflammation going on. And so, yeah. So when you get them dissolved, uh, black hole uh, and then scraping is terrific. And there's various treatments people could do, and that's absolutely outrageous. And um, the um, glycolic, um, which black amber glycolic, um, has everything in it as well, um, and that could be done internally, um, and some could be placed on the outside um, where the injury is and be diluted, um, but it'll pull and pull up toxin and strengthen, and like, you can put it on a cracked skin, for instance, that's, that's really cracked out bad, and it'll heal it up, dissolve all the cracked skin, and completely bring it back to normal. Yeah, so it's quite radical. When you when so, where people use the black amber glycolic, they can clear up spots on their face and things. Yeah, and heals up the skin. 
So here you can put it on your face and sort of heals up the skin on your face. Yes. Quite considerable effect. Yeah, remarkable matter of fact. Yeah. Cha ching. I wanna be a good ambassador for the team, you know, I love you, Doctor Job. Yeah, yeah. Everything. Mm. So I guess Well I appreciate all of our listeners and people tuning in. Please let other people know more about everything that we're going on here. And um let's change what the group think is about everything. <laughs> yeah. Because the group think is more whole band pattern, more about someone's self autonomy and interdependence and imbalance. I mean things in such like this sort of really um, but um, learning and passing the information on. There's such a wealth of information at um, jabdavid.com there, and certainly where you've got information there, all stored, Luki from past stuff and things. Lots of stuff for people to browse and learn more about. Yeah. Anyway, mate. Okay, so we'll um, catch up to each other in a future show, eh? Sounds good Coming to up. me. Love you, mate. Good on you, mate. Love you, mate.